Hey guys, so today I'm going to be playing around with Particle Shop, which is a new plugin from Corel, and it's basically like a set of brushes where the tip shapes are dynamic and kind of move around while you're working with them. But um, rather than explain it all, I'll just go through some of the different tip shapes and, and use the program, and you guys can kind of see how it works. Um, you can find it in the filter menu. Just go down to um, Painter and then Particle Shop, and it will open in a new window. Uh, on the left, you have the different options, like there's the brush and the eraser and the smudge tool and the color picker. And on the right, you have the different uh, brush tip shapes. So like this is the fabric brush. And you can kind of see, as I pull it out, it's creating these kind of triangular shapes um, in a way where it's, it's different each time I paint with it. It's not one standard shape that I'm painting. It's, it's kind of breathing in and out as I do it. And you've got the, the option to go back up there if you want to go back a step or two. And here you can see it kind of, it, the, the transparency on the brush changes as you're painting with it as well. So in places where the folds would be, it's, it's more opaque, and in the, the larger parts, it's transparent. And you can, use the, um, you can use the blender to kind of ease the transitions between the brush strokes and either your photo or your painting, whatever it is you're working on as you're working on it. This is the fur brush, and again, um, with the dynamic tip shape thing, you can kind of tell that as I'm painting with it, it's not putting the hair down in a way that's uh, the same each time. Like it's, it's a little bit random so that it feels more natural. This is the hairbrush. And it's good because it actually, it, it kind of paints the hair in locks. And you can change the thickness um, of the hair from those tabs at the top, which each, each brush has its own set of modifiers you can use, and they're always in that top bar. And for these hair strokes, I'm not even following through with the whole stroke. When I go in, it kind of, uh, Particle Shop sort of takes what I'm doing and, and adds a little bit extra to it. So this is the fine art brush now that I'm using, which is actually uh, similar to the hair brush, except the the bristles are thicker and it's it's putting down thicker strokes, uh, whereas the hair brush is more about thinner strokes and kind of getting that wispy feeling. The fine art brush is more just kind of like a, a thicker loaded brush, but still dynamic, obviously. All right, and this is this is the space brush, which again uh, very convenient for this painting, um, and it's basically it's it just allows me to add more depth to the background by putting more value and more color in there in a way that feels natural and kind of you know feels like those strange milky shapes in the sky at night.
and I'm I'm particularly using a more uh, darker kind of purpley color for this so that the background will feel a little bit more in harmony with her dress and the foreground in general. And actually, even more specifically, I mean, if you want something in the background to uh, facilitate something in the foreground, don't be afraid to just use the color picker and just start grabbing colors from the foreground and kind of working them into the background so things feel more harmonized. And this is the light brush. Uh, which is good for kind of adding uh, stars and things like that throughout the a space scene. Again, very useful. And here I'm using the smudge tool to kind of uh, ease off on some of the hard edges on those stars. Just again, because it, it helps if you have any kind of painting to uh, vacillate between hard edges and soft edges. Because if you have too many hard edges in one area, it stands out and feels weird. If you have too many soft edges, things start to feel really muddy. Um, and because when you're using the star brush, like with everything else, it, it has this dynamic tip shape and it's kind of changing things around all the time it helps to just kind of go through and uh, work everything together. And Particle Shop has a feature where once I have finished with all this editing, I can save it to its own separate layer, which I'll do shortly. And then it gives me the ability to then take that adjustment layer and move it through my painting however I want to. So uh, if I want to put it behind something or if I want to adjust the opacity, I can do that afterwards. And that way I can also use the Photoshop brushes and do all kinds of stuff that I would normally be doing. So now kind of like what I was doing with the smudge tool in Particle Shop, I'm just kind of using the Photoshop stuff to blend all these things together a little bit more. And then I'm going to do more particle shop adjustments in a second. But I'm just smoothing transitions right now. All right, so now we're back in particle shop. Adding a little bit more with the fur brush. And there you can kind of see what it looks like with it on and off. And now I know I want to do something a little more abstract in the background. And I think I'm going to use the fabric brush and try out something a little more abstract because that's kind of... I feel like one of the strengths of Particle Shop is doing things that are a little more abstract than uh, you would normally do. Because as the tip shapes are moving, because again, they're kind of breathing like a sea anemone, 
as the tip shapes are moving, you're kind of trying to control that chaos into something that, that feels good and something maybe a little more abstract. So here you can say now I'm back in Photoshop and because it's on its own separate layer, I can move it behind the figure and I don't have to worry about erasing around things and stuff like that. One of the benefits to having an illustration with layers. And I can now combine it with the other adjustments that I made earlier and kind of turn it into more of a finished painting. As a side note, and I don't, I don't know how nerdy you guys are, but um, the model who posed for this illustration is my friend Mari Ijima, who is the voice and well, she is she is the speaking voice and the singing voice of uh, Minmei on the Macross cartoon, the original one. Just so you know. All right, here you can see I am taking an eraser to the background adjustments. Because again, um, once you've got it in Photoshop, I mean, you can just treat it like you would any other part of the painting. And this way, again, I can kind of soften edges and harden edges where I need to and create more of a rhythm with, with edges. Kind of same with what I was doing with the purple, with the space brush originally. Um, part of the reason, in case you're wondering why I use the the pink and purple for the fabric in the background, is again so it kind of bridges the gap between the the blue of her, the sky and the purple of her dress. Now I'm throwing a little bit of a rim light. Uh, around her and probably some on the railing um, just to sort of finesse the foreground and the background of the painting together a little bit more. So hopefully this should give you guys uh, at least a basic idea for how Particle Shop works. And all the brushes that you've seen me use so far are from the starter pack. But um, even being a fairly new plugin, as far as I can tell, um, there's already a bunch of brushes available to download. And just like what, I, what I've been doing here with these, I mean, really, it's just a matter of just experimenting with them and seeing what everything does and seeing what you can do with it. So here you can see what the original adjustments look like. And then that is the original painting as before I started. And this is the final with both adjustment layers combined. So that should give you a basic idea for how Particle Shop works. So it won't seem quite so strange the first time you see those moving tip shapes. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a good day and enjoy your time painting.